Hey everybody, Darren Burroughs here. Today is a final 2020 video. I thought I would walk you through the last year of my life as a real estate investor. 2020 has been a very interesting year for many of us, either good or bad. And when I reviewed my 2020 year, there was a lot of things that surprised me and I'd almost forgot about. So I wanted to walk you through what's transpired for me over the last 12 months, because I'm sure many of you have heard this expression. We underestimate what we can accomplish in five years and we overestimate what we can accomplish in one year. So I'll walk you through the highlights of my year from a real estate investing perspective and you can be the judge on whether I underestimated or overestimated what I could accomplish this year. I'd also love to hear about your year. So in the comments section below, tell me a little bit about your 2020 from a real estate investing perspective. Before we get into it today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. My 2020 started in Mesa, Arizona. I often spend Christmas and New Year's with my parents, and this year was no exception. One of my goals as a real estate investor has been to spend my winters away from Canada, and 2020 was one of the first years I was able to do that. I left in mid-December and returned in mid-March. After spending about 10 days in Arizona with my family, my buddy Corey picked me up and we decided to drive from Mesa, Arizona, all the way down to Cabo San Lucas, down the Baja of California. This trip should have been a bit of an omen for 2020 and what was to come, because about two days into our journey down to Cabo San Lucas, we blew a tire in the middle of nowhere on a dirt road in Mexico. Well. <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay, we're in the middle of uh, <laughs> this, uh, wherever we are. We so, got, we've got some trail mix. We're gonna learn how to change a tire on mix. a brand new Jeep. Although I can't remember the last time I changed a tire, Corey and I really didn't have a lot of choice. It wasn't like there was CAA coming anytime soon. So we grabbed the instruction manual and decided to change out the tire on the side of the road. Well, I gotta tell you, <laughs> if this whole real estate thing doesn't work out, we can uh, start a tire shop <laughs> and uh, change tires on the side of the road in Mexico. <laughs> Look at that beauty, ready to go. And brand new. <laughs> Sorry for saying that word. Like it video. never happened. This thing, thing is still leaking air. After about 45 minutes, we successfully changed out the tire and we were back on the road headed down to Cabo San Lucas. This didn't really have anything to do with real estate investing, but it was another good life lesson that if you have the right tools, you have the instructions, you take your time, you can probably work your way through almost anything. Once Corey and I arrived in Cabo San Lucas and got settled, I really shifted my focus towards my YouTube channel. I knew I wanted to launch my YouTube channel in 2020, and I thought the Pacific Ocean would serve as the perfect backdrop for my first few videos. Besides planning and shooting my first couple videos, I decided to look at a little bit of real estate while I was in Cabo San Lucas. I connected with a local realtor there and she showed us a variety of different properties. One that caught my eye was a beautiful home that slept up to 10 people and had its own groundskeeper. I was looking at acquiring this property and renting it out as a retreat center, but ultimately I decided against it for a couple of reasons. One, the property was a little far out and kind of hard to get to. And the second thing was, I would have had to buy this and run a business out of it as well. And I really didn't want to mix the business and the real estate in one transaction. So although it was a pretty cool property to visit and hang out at for the afternoon, I decided to pass on this one. After spending some time in Cabo San Lucas, I then traveled to Ixtapa, Mexico, where I was welcomed by my friends from Red Deer, Alberta, Ron and Pat. Or as the locals called them, Ronaldo and Patrizia. Even my English Spanish is terrible. While I was in Ixtapa, I came up with the idea of shooting an interview style video for my YouTube channel. And Ron was my very first guest. And if you haven't had a chance to check out that video, I'll link it right here. To this day, it's still the second highest viewed video on my channel. The next stop on my trip was Playa del Carmen, where I spent the next 10 days at an all-inclusive resort. Between the eating, the drinking, the tennis, and the karaoke, I managed to squeeze in some time to start working on my website. I also bought my very first property of 2020 while I was in Playa del Carmen in Hamilton, Ontario, which just goes to show you, you can buy properties from anywhere you want in the world and you don't necessarily need to see the property before you put an offer in on it. I bought this property from a wholesaler and the plan was to buy it, do a cosmetic renovation, put it back on the market, sell it, and move on to the next one. I'll tell you how that turned out later on in the video. After Playa del Carmen, I flew back to the US and spent some time in Los Angeles, 
Dallas, and back in Mesa with my parents again. From there, I returned to Mexico one final time and spent a week in Puerto Vallarta at a yoga retreat. And when I wasn't eating or drinking or doing yoga in Puerto Vallarta, I was finalizing my website and getting ready to launch. And then things got a little weird. While we were in Mexico, we started hearing about this thing called the coronavirus. And things at home were changing very quickly. The NBA canceled their season, followed shortly after that by the NHL, and the United States started banning European travelers from arriving in the US. And my first thought after making sure all my family and friends were safe and healthy was, I wonder how this is gonna affect the real estate market. So after my yoga retreat in Puerto Vallarta was complete, I finally flew back to Canada on March 14th of 2020. I've never seen the city of Toronto so eerily quiet. The streets were as empty as the toilet paper shelf at the local no frills. Although the plan all along was to launch my website and my YouTube channel when I returned home, I really saw an opportunity to have a captive audience while everyone was condemned to their homes. So after returning from Mexico in the same week, I launched my website, my YouTube channel, and my formal coaching program. Before I knew it, April was fast approaching and the property that I bought while I was in Playa del Carmen was supposed to close on April 3rd. After reaching out to the sellers directly through the wholesaler, we asked them if they'd be interested in extending the closing for one month and they agreed. We were now scheduled to close that property on May the 4th because, you know, may the 4th be with you. Between shooting YouTube videos and preparing to close on our property in Hamilton, Ontario, in April, I was also working on a new project, our Level Up Meetup, which we launched in May of 2020. Our Level Up Meetup was created for investors from across the country to gather virtually, to share deals, gain knowledge, and ultimately network with like-minded individuals. Since launching in May of this year, our meetups have consistently had close to 100 attendees per session. And if you haven't had a chance to check out one of our meetups, I'll leave a link in the description below to get registered for our meeting coming up in January. In May of 2020, I was really focusing on expanding my network and that paid dividends with an exclusive listing that was brought to me in June of 2020 for a property in High Park. After writing off this property on the initial visit because I thought the project was too expensive, I took another look at the numbers and came up with a system that I thought might work moving forward. So in June of 2020, we put an offer in on that building with the idea of converting it to a boutique apartment building with eight self-contained units in it. This offer was conditional for 30 days, which allowed us to do our due diligence and also to gather investors for that project. While we were doing due diligence on our Toronto property, another set of business partners from Arizona decided that they wanted to sell a property that I own in Thatcher, Arizona. Although I'd only owned that property for about four years of my business partners, it was good timing considering we were having problems with local property management and we wanted to take our cash and invest it in other transactions. So after doing some cleanup and some minor renovations, we put the property on the market and after three days, we had a firm offer. In July, after completing our 30 days of due diligence on our Oakmount property, we decided to remove conditions and go firm on that deal with a closing now at the end of October. A couple weeks later over the August long weekend, a realtor friend of mine connected with me and told me there was a property that he wanted me to see that he thought I might be interested in. The property itself had a lot of potential, but also the fact that it was a long weekend and many people were away, we were able to lock up that property before the long weekend was over. While we were doing due diligence on our new property in Toronto, I also closed on my property in Arizona in the month of August. At the same time in August, I flew back to Alberta to see some friends, some family, check out my properties, and also do a little bit of light demolition work. While my carpenter was rebuilding the steps on my property in Red Deer, Alberta, I was spending the majority of my time in August getting ready to launch a new project called the Synergy Mastermind. The Synergy Mastermind was co-founded by myself and Steve and Randy of The Reinvestors, and the idea behind the Synergy Mastermind was to gather elite investors from across the country in order to be able to collaborate, educate, and scale our real estate investing businesses. If you're interested in finding out more about the Synergy Mastermind, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you haven't had a chance to check out my video that I did with Randy and Steve of The Reinvestors, I'll link it right here. In September of 2020, I hit a milestone with my YouTube channel. It took me six hardworking months, but I was able to achieve my first target of 1,000 subscribers. In the first part of October, we closed on our Dover Court property. And on the same day that we closed, we had our Committee of Adjustments hearing to have our eight units approved in that building, and we were approved. Later in that month, I achieved my second YouTube milestone where I was able to achieve 4,000 watch hours, which for those of you that know YouTube, if you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, that means you get monetized. Although the money that I make off the YouTube ad revenue is not a lot, it is a great opportunity for me to take that money and put it back into the channel to produce better quality content. At the end of October, after a lot of stress and a couple of sleepless nights, we finally closed on our Oakmount property. 
Having closed on our Dover Court and Oak Mount properties, that allowed me to shift my focus away from acquisition and more to renovation, which is really what I love. In November, after flip-flopping on what we wanted to do with our property in Hamilton, Ontario, we finally decided to put it on the market for sale. Contrary to our plan in the beginning where we were just planning to do a cosmetic renovation, we decided to convert that property to a legal duplex. And the reason we did that is because we weren't sure exactly what was gonna happen through the pandemic and we wanted to have multiple exit strategies. Because the market in Hamilton is very strong, we decided to hold off offers for one week. And although we only got one offer on the property, it was for $27,000 over our asking price and we were able to firm up that offer within two days. After firming up the offer in Hamilton and both projects underway in Toronto, it gave me a moment to breathe during the month of December. After having a good look at my portfolio and my real estate investing business, I decided to hire not one, but two new business coaches. Not because my businesses are not successful, but because I've learned in real estate that if you wanna to get to that next level, find somebody who's at that level and hire them as a coach or as a mentor. After also having a detailed look at my portfolio, I've decided to sell off some of my properties in Red Deer, Alberta. Again, not because these properties aren't performing well, but I wanna take that capital and redeploy it in some other situations. And this is something that we constantly need to be able to do as real estate investors, is reevaluate our portfolios, reorganize and decide which direction we wanna go and then take steps in order to be able to get there. As you can see, it's been a very eventful year for me in 2020 and I couldn't be more grateful to all of you for watching these videos and really supporting me along the way. Not only have I had amazing guests on my channel this year, I've also had an opportunity to guest on many other channels. So I wanted to say a huge thank you to REC Canada, Michael Saracini and Key Spire, Steven Randy of The Reinvestors, Justin Conico, Everyday Investor with Rav Tour, Nightcap with Jazz Takar, Corey and Tiffany Young, Luke Boyron, Dave Dubow, and Sarah Larby. Thank you guys so much for having me on your channel. And if you haven't had a chance to check out any of those interviews, I'll leave a link for all of those in the description below. As a final recap of 2020, I wanted to share a few stats with you. This year, I put out 72 videos on YouTube. I had over 66,000 views on my channel, which totaled up to over 7,500 watch hours. And as of today, I just hit 2,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So I wanted to say a huge thank you to you for all the support you've given me this year. It really helps me stay motivated and keep putting out quality content for my YouTube audience. You guys know what to do next. If you don't mind, hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. I'd love to hear about your 2020 year, so leave it in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.